All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to my Fallout 4 Mod Spotlight series, where today we are having a look at the 9x39 project mod, which is being released by user FX0X01. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is two different Soviet-era created special operations rifles. And these things are pretty freaking awesome. They've got a couple of little minor issues that hopefully will be fixed in the future as currently this is mod release version 1.0 so there's bound to be a few things here and there that are going to change and in fact one of my really two issues that i have with this mod the mod makers have already mentioned will be fixed in a future version so yay for that but other than those minor little issues these things are <laughs> pretty cool now like i said it adds in two different guns the first of which being the asval which was created by the soviets in the late 80s, I think 85, 87, somewhere in there, and was built to be a special operations rifle. It is a completely silenced assault rifle, which at the time was designed to use the 9x39 ammo, which was very powerful, meant to destroy body armor. And that was the purpose of this gun, to be quiet and very, very deadly. Now, the other weapon that we have added in, which I forgot to add into favorites there, oh, the things I forget to do when setting up my episodes, is the VSS. Now, as you can see, it's basically identical in look right here to the AS Val, except this one's meant to be more of a marksman-style rifle. Same deal, though, being silenced, having a fast rate of fire, and using the 9x39 rounds, uh, but it has a longer, more marksman-style stock. If we actually look at them in here, here, there we go. Go to inspect the AS Val. You can see this one's much more meant to be a sort of tactical in the field thing. And then the uh, VSS here, as you can see with the more marksman style wooden stock. And yeah, slower rate of fire, much more accurate, much more range to it. But again, that same silenced whole sort of barrel, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing you may have already noticed here on this screen is that it doesn't actually use that 9x39 round that I mentioned while talking about these. And that's one of my issues with the mod. But it's also that issue which I said the mod makers have already planned to fix. Right now, for balancing purposes and just to get the rifle out, they decided to use the 38 round, but they will be releasing a version of the mod in the future which will use the custom ammo type 9x39. So I can't wait for that one as hopefully it actually does add more damage because right now, the bog standard versions of these things <laughs> really, really don't do a whole lot of damage to things. I mean, that one at its base level is 57. This one at its base level is 46. Now, you can add in quite a few interesting modifications to these things to make them better. Oh, but still, they're never really going to be too powerful. I believe this one I got to be the most powerful I could, and that is uh, using what few modifications we could that added power. But overall, we have some pretty awesome looking mods in here, including a fun laser beam right in your eye. There we go. Perfect. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty cool gun. So let us actually go and take a look at the modifications, though actually, before I do, before I do, I should mention how you get your hands on these guns. And well, if you don't want to cheat like I did by using console IDs, you can find them at the Sentinel site in the Glowing Sea, which may be a little bit difficult for some people to get to, but that is an option. Now, other than that, you will start to see them spawn on random enemies at level 30. Problem with that, though, is it's only going to spawn on legendary enemies. You aren't going to find these in the wild off of a random foe you've defeated without being legendary. So the ones that I have are actually kind of unique as they're all just of the bog standard versions like you would find at the Sentinel site. So that is how you get your hands on these. Let us now take a look at the modifications. Now let's take a look at the ASVL first, the standard issue one, which as you can see here will do 46 damage, rate of fire 113, range 251, accuracy of 77, weight of 8, and a pretty fun little rifle. With the receivers, 
you only have two options, either the standard receiver or a special receiver, which as you can see, does raise up the damage as well as one point extra in range, uh, which is odd because it actually says over here inferior range, but it actually does increase it there. So maybe that's not quite fixed yet. Uh, interesting requirements for it, plastic, rubber, and steel, but, you know, gun nut too, so woohoo. And that's a fun little attachment there. Only one receiver, which is a little bit sad. I was hoping for more barrels, though. <laughs> it's even more depressing, because at the moment, no new barrels. Hopefully, we get some added in to the future. Who knows if we will or not, though. Uh, same deal with stock, because I guess they want to keep the sort of standard look of these, so no additional stocks beside the standard. As for magazines, you do have some options. You can go with a uh, standard magazine, standard quick eject, an extended magazine, or extended quick eject. And they are quite nice. I do like the look of the uh, quick eject magazines. They are pretty cool. Now the next is sights, where we have a few more options in here. We have the 1PN93, which is a night vision scope. Very fun indeed. A glow sight, just be a little bit better than your standard iron sights. A cobra sight, which is basically a hollow sight, a reflex sight, a very nice little thing. And then finally, the PS0 or PS01 scope, which is more for a sniping scope. And dear lord, it takes up a lot of space on the screen when you are out in the world. It basically takes up this whole corner of the screen over here with that scope. It's a little awkward. Uh, I actually haven't played with this one yet. Let's build ourselves a 1PN93 on this baby and check out what it does. Now the next bit we have here is attachments, which you can choose tactical attachments, which are quite cool. So you can actually add in some tactical rails onto the thing to hook other things onto. I have problems with this though. The uh, gener generic tactical attachment right here, if I build, doesn't always give me other attachments, because if we go out here, oh hey, it worked this time. <laughs> Sometimes when I build that attachment, these things don't show, because when you do have the tactical attachment on here, you'll have a laser sight, a vertical grip, and a flashlight option, but that doesn't always come up. And the bad part is, it seems to be stuck on that gun. I'm actually gonna go over to my other rifle now and see if it's fixed for this one. Oh, see, now it is fixed. So it must just be an odd glitch that you get on occasion. When you build the tactical attachment, you don't always get these rail options. But when you do, you can build yourself a fun little laser sight as we did before. And then on this one, a fun vertical grip to give you a little bit more accuracy, which is always nice. And then a flashlight, which, hey, who doesn't like a flashlight attachment on their gun? Very, very cool indeed. And I mean, come on, who doesn't like all that stuff? It's just cool. But like I said, sometimes there is a glitch where you may you may just have to leave the workbench for a little while and it'll come back, but it does sometimes disappear. And the final attachment, I honestly don't know how I feel about this thing. It is a damage multiplier and that requires no requirements. I don't know if I like this, but the problem is, is without it, this gun can only ever reach 76 damage, which isn't the greatest. And even at 80, you're only gonna get 108. So I don't, uh, I don't know how I feel about this. I am kind of hoping it gets replaced by something else in the future. But for the time being, I mean, I'd much rather have no damage than low damage, or well, Hmm. How did I just say? Did I say no damage than more damage? I don't know what I'm saying. Let's retry that. I'd ra much rather have more damage than less. So <laughs> I'll deal with it for now. Now that is all the stuff on the AS Val. Now we have similar things on the VSS. We have the same receiver. We have the same barrel. The stock, we have an addition of a stock cheek rest, which is nice, adds a little bit more accuracy. Uh, the magazines, same deal, just the standard and extended with quickie jack or not. Same different scopes that you can add onto this. And uh, for the tactical attachments, oh, see, now they've gone away over here. Now we don't have them here. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's a weird glitch with these guns, I don't know why. But uh, the only difference is instead of a hand grip, you can have a bipod, and that is it. And so that is the attachments. It appears to be getting very foggy outside now. Oh, lovely. Don't you just love how that works in the game? And let's take a look at how these guns go. Now, this is the more or less standard one here, except I did the night vision scope. Let's see how that scope looks. Wow, with the fog? Horrible. And with, oh my, look at how much room it's taking up. Let's switch over to the other one because, well, they both sound exactly the same. This one, of course, has the more red dot sight. Well, you see, we do have the fun laser dot there, which is horribly inaccurate if you fire from the hip. As you can see, it's kind of, you know, low and to the left. But when you do aim, you can kind of see the dot right next to our aiming point. So that is quite interesting. Now, as for the sound, I'll shut up for a second. And there we go, and we get the custom animation for the reload. Very, very fun weapon indeed. Very cool. And, of course, kind of hard to see the texturing on this thing, because, well, it is meant to be special operations, so it is a very, very matte black for that reason. So uh, it does look very sort of single tone when you are sort of against the light, but if we kind of let the light shine on a bit more, you can see it. But there we are. So that is the sound of this one. Fun little weapon, pretty accurate at range, which is always nice. And if we go over to our other one here, which uh, we'll go with this one without the scope first off. That is the iron sights on it, same iron sights on the ASVAL as well. And same sound, but you'll notice a much smaller magazine on this thing as it is meant to be more of a marksman deal. And of course, if we go with the one with the scope, oh boy. Oh boy, there we are. See what I said about that scope? It's just gigantic, but you know what? It deals some good damage, so let's go down here to our usual shot on the dog, if we can see the bloody thing today. Aha, barely. And down, and deal all 138 damage. I think I shot it twice, but hey, what the hell? It basically is an automatic sniper rifle, and with actually pretty good grouping, even with fully automatic, if we actually wait to reload there and fire at that rock. Not much kick to it, so you do get very, very good accuracy. But yes, that is basically it for the uh, 9x39 project mod. Like I said, hopefully in the future, it will actually have the proper uh, ammo for it. But for the time being, you know, we've got some awesome attachments for this thing. I really do love the uh, laser sight, the scope, etc. They are very cool. And just overall, it is a fun new weapon. And if you are a sneaky kind of character, you know, you can still have that lovely fire rate of an assault rifle, but while still maintaining the stealth and quiet of, say, a silenced pistol. But yes, that is going to be it for this episode. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next. Oh, and almost forgot, if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, you can check the uh, link in the description as always. But that's it for today, so uh, yeah, hope you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.